Okay, picking back up. Chapter 49, The Final Prophet of God. From the book, Isaiah 53, In the Day of the Lord, that I was commanded and directed to write by the words of God. Who is here? This is the day of the Lord. I am his representation, his prophet like Moses. I have two covenants to deliver. And finally, you have somebody that can properly explain Isaiah 53. It was written so that nobody could before me, the righteous servant. And I am Moshe. And believe it or not, Elijah too. Four righteous servants to come. And they come in the day of the Lord. But we only have one description. And that description is me and my life. And you can find that on video. Now there's an older video that was about an hour and 24 minutes long that is just terrible today. But we've redone it. Uh, it comes in four different parts. Uh, 104, 204, 304, 304, and 404. And it's uh, basically the exact same uh, video. It's just that you can see me clearly as you can now. And in that other one, and it is, I bring that up because it is being viewed left and right. Hundreds uh, in the last two days alone. And I'm like, I'm embarrassed by it. But fortunately, uh, I've been embarrassed by the state of the videos for some time. They were done two years ago, and they've been reposted so many times, they've just kind of fallen apart. But fortunately, this is when God decided to redo it, and we're getting things fixed up. This is called, oh, and it's, it's just the same as uh, God, as the Orthodox Jews believe, dictated the Torah to Moses. You know, it contains information, Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, that it, Moses couldn't know. He would have had no clue. I mean, he grew up in Pharaoh's house. I mean, he wasn't, you know, I don't know what kind of education he got, but it was an Egyptian education with knowledge of their gods, I suppose. But um, it's the same with me. This is... This, God gave Moses three proofs. He's given me three proofs. This is foremost, the greatest of my proofs. These two books he also dictated to me, the life of God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53. That's me. It's my life. And it's to show how I fit the verses of 53. Oh, God also had the entire the rest of the Hebrew Bible after the Torah written by men at his command and direction dictation if you will the entire book is his and I can I can and there's videos I've already done where I actually verify that because there's some books that come together and it would have been impossible for the writers of their own uh, to put it all to put it together as it needed to be, so that we with certainty, certainty, would know this is the day of the Lord, and we did. Four righteous sermons to come, two covenants to be delivered, just as Moses delivered the first one. Is what's occurring, and that takes care of the last of the unfulfilled prophecies of God in the Hebrew Bible. If he, I don't know if he plans on writing again. He really doesn't tell me what's going to happen next. The final prophet of God. When Muhammad was 40 years old, he was commanded by God through his angel Gabriel to declare his oneness to the idolaters in politics polytheist of the whole world and to deliver the message of peace to an embattled humanity. In response to this command of heaven, Muhammad launched the momentous program called Islam, which was to change the destiny of mankind forever.
This is an account of somebody else. I'm not, it's not my opinion that all this is correct. He was in Hera when one day the archangel Gabriel appeared before him and brought to him the tidings that God had chosen him to be his last messenger to this world and it imposed upon him the duty of leading mankind out of the welter of sin, error, and ignorance into the light of guidance, truth, and knowledge. I'm the last messenger of God, and when you tell that to a Muslim who practices in Islam, and they all do, get ready to start running. They have it etched on all their mosques. Muhammad, the last messenger and prophet of God. No, he's not. There's somebody to talk about this uh, story we have here. He was in here when one day, okay, I got the. According to the accounts of the Shia, Shia Muslims, Muhammad Mustafa, far from being surprised or frightened by the appearance of Gabriel, welcomed him as if he had been expecting him. Gabriel brought the tidings that Allah, had chosen him to be his last messenger to mankind and congratulated him on being selected to become the recipient of the greatest of all honors for a mortal in this world. Okay, all this comes from an organization called Al-Al-Islam entitled The Birth of Islam and the Proclamations by Muhammad of His Mission. Muslims believe that the Quran was orally, orally revealed by God to the final prophet, Muhammad, through the archangel Gabriel, incrementally over a period of some 23 years, beginning on December 22, 609, common era, when Muhammad was 40, and concluding in 632 the year of his death. Muslims regard the Quran as Muhammad's most important miracle, a proof, here we go again, of his prophethood. Moses, a prophet, God spoke to him. That's what being a prophet is. God, you can speak to God and God speaks to you. And we know it was because of the Torah. And now we know that all of your prophets, Jewish people, in the book of the prophets, because they all say they talked with God and God talked with them. They wrote God's words. They were all prophets. And, uh, I mean, you're correct. Put them in the book of prophets. And they were also men in divine beings. Because, well, you can find that on other videos, what that means. It's, it's, we've gone over it a dozen times easy. In the culmination of a series of divine messages, starting with those revealed to Adam and ending with Muhammad. According to tradition, several of Muhammad's companions served as scribes and recorded the revelations. He didn't write them. His scribes did. He just told them what the angel Gabriel told him. Shortly after his death, the Quran was compiled by the companions who had written down or memorized parts of it. That's from Wikipedia on the Quran. In the writing by Al-Islam, it is said that Muhammad was in Hira when one day the archangel Gabriel appeared before him and brought to him the tidings that God had chosen him to be his last messenger to this world. God chose his last messenger long before the time of Muhammad in here, in Malachi 3. Elijah to arrive in a time to come, and that time is here, and that would also include Moshiach and God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, and uh, of course the prophet like Moses. Deliver two covenants. Uh, okay.
Okay, talking about Elijah. And to deliver the new covenant to the Jewish people and recounsel the families one to the other through Judaism. I can't believe that's not in here. <laughs> well, I know we have another video on it. When Elijah comes, God's servant David and the prophet like Moses, they are all one man, and that man is God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53. Four righteous servants to come, only one description of a righteous servant, the righteous servant of Isaiah 53, and I fit the verses, and I can explain how to interpret it. God has to tell you, you can't figure it out on your own. God's righteous servant is the final prophet of God, not Muhammad. And let me just add, because I'm so surprised we don't have that in here. And I'm sure we had this elsewhere because I've seen it too many times. There is no angel Gabriel. <laughs> it doesn't exist. The only place you see him is in a couple of places in the book of Daniel, which is, which is not a book of the prophets. And not only that, he's not an angel. He's a man. In a dream, there is no archangel Gabriel. And you know who came up with that? Christianity. And then, it, and then Islam took it from them. You can't find the Hebrew Bible, which is the only, uh, as, as far as I know, Bible, I include the Quran and, and the Christian New Testament, that is written on the command and direction of God himself. Anyway, uh, I don't believe there was an encounter between Muhammad and an angel that does not exist. I think they basically plagiarized the Hebrew Bible, changing it in many ways to fit their cultural norms. All of a sudden, they believed in one God, whereas it was the Jewish people who first believed in that manner, one God. And uh, the knowledge of Adam, did the archangel who doesn't exist tell Muhammad about Adam? And tracing that lineage into Abraham. See, you got three religions and every one of them claims to be of, uh, of Abraham. Three religions of Abraham. Well, only one can be correct. And it turns out that's the Jewish people. This is another thing God's having me do. <laughs> In the day of the Lord, I gotta, I gotta be four servants. I gotta deliver two covenants. I gotta clear the way for God um, to return to His temple. Meaning, I had to be instrumental in having it built. And a whole myriad of additional things. And that doesn't even touch on the issue of Palestinians, the enemy within the borders, in, in such matters as that. So uh, it's a long road ahead. Still got uh, a lot of naysayers and haters and disbelievers out there, shunned, despised, and held to no account. That's how Isaiah 53 talks about the righteous servant. And it has come to pass, I can assure you. Okay, the um, final chapter, and it is good, and it's very important. Chapter 50, the day of the Lord. It's very important because God made a huge change in the day of the Lord, Malachi 3. From all references to it uh, previously in the Hebrew Bible. I'll get to that shortly.